What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty here. And today, we're going bottom fishing. We, uh, we enjoy doing a lot more bottom fishing than trolling and stuff. So we're putting more of an effort into trying to catch live bait today and doing some bottom fishing for, um, let me turn this off, any kind of snappers or um, grouper, honestly, anything that really bites, we'll be happy with with the bottom fish. Um, as we're not that experienced with bottom fishing here, um, we picked up a block of chum and some squid and we have frozen mullet so we're going to try all those we're going to be butterflying the mullet and dropping down pieces of squid and we're going to use the trum to try to get some live value because we know that live bait always works better than dead bait if you guys do enjoy the video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe down below it really helps me out a lot this video is going to be posted no matter what because let me take off my glasses we're getting serious here um my channel i just want to be transparent here i want to be as honest as i can with fishing down here since we are new to florida fishing we've only been doing it for like a year or two and um it's really different than what we're used to up north and i feel like so many channels kind of just post like a highlight reel of you know what their day like their fishing week was basically and you see them catching all these fish and when in reality you come out here and there are plenty of days that we come out here and not catch anything and that is definitely because we're beginners and don't know the fishing here that well but also that's how the fishing is here it's not just drop the line in the water and you automatically catch a fish there's a ton of competition um there's definitely overfishing so i just want to be my channel i want it to be as transparent and honest as i can with my fishing experiences and i want my audience to learn with me so sorry for that rant really quickly but you know this video I just wanted to be posting no matter what because I want you guys to see what it's actually like to fish down here and I want to just teach you guys as I'm learning. So without further ado, we're going to run out to our bait spot and try to catch some live ballyhoo and yeah we'll see how that goes. So let's run out there. Right, guys we just pulled up on this spot it's called the pipeline because out of hillsborough inlet which is right here where we always come out of um they do a dredge pipe that's um always here it's a permanent dredge pipe and they dredge from the inlet and they come out here so if you guys look on your gps's you'll see that there's like a dotted line that comes or might, your gps's might show it but um there's a dotted line that comes all the way out here and the dredge lets out right here so you, i hope you guys can see it on video but it, there's a little bit of disturbance in the water compared to the rest. There's the regular water right here is where they let out all of the, um, the stuff, the dredging. So it turns up a bunch of nutrients in the water and it creates for um, tons of bait and stuff over here. So we just came over here and uh, I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but there's a couple baits down there. It looks like Ballyhoo it's dispersed, but we've seen them jumping all around here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our um, chum bag. By the way, guys, we're, we're not professionals at catching bait. Still very much learning at this. So don't take my, uh, don't take my advice 100% to heart here. Um, but we're gonna take the chum bag and we're gonna drop it in the water and hopefully attract some of the ballyhoo to the boat. And we're gonna throw the casting net on it. I have like, it's like a 10 or 15 foot casting net. It's huge, very hard to throw. And I'll get some video of that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to get some ballyhoo this way. Hopefully we do. If not, we have other plans. So let's try to get some ballyhoo. I got a little bit more to it. All right, guys. Um, our bait spot does not seem to be holding many ballyhoo. It seemed promising at first. There was a bunch of ballyhoo jumping, but um, we put the chum bag in the water and we weren't seeing a thing. We haven't seen a ballyhoo in, in a while. There's a couple of predators and stuff underneath the water but um, not enough here to make us stay. So what we're gonna do is last time we were out and we were trolling, we marked a bunch of humps that we have never seen before. I've never located them before. And there was a good ledge too, um, in Boca, around Boca Inlet in about 70 feet of water. So what we're gonna do is go head over there. We're gonna anchor up. We're gonna toss out the chum bag, hoping to attract more ballyhoo to the boat, um, which is like the more traditional way of catching ballyhoo, anchoring and trying to chum them to the boat and then cast net them, ballyhoo, whatever you do. Um, so we're going to head over there, anchor up, throw out the chum bag, and while we're doing that, we're just going to start bottom fishing with our frozen bait and hopefully have some luck. So we're going to head over there and we'll see you there. All right, so we just dropped the anchor and finally got it to hook in. Hopefully it stays this time. We're having a lot of trouble today, 
Um, it's a little bit windier than it was forecasting. I think the wind's going with the tide, all um, going south. And uh, we're trying to anchor in 67 feet of water, and I think uh, it's just too deep, and we're moving too fast, and uh, we're just having trouble anchoring here. So hopefully it stays in. We're gonna toss the bag over with the chum, try to get the ballyhoo to come to us, and at least try to get some live bait. So if we want to drift. Um, which is probably going to be the better option today. We'll have a live bait at least. We'll see. Um, but we're tossing the bag over now. Over here. My dad's... Whoa, I almost fell in the water. <laughs> My dad, dad's shaking the bag up to try to get the stuff out. And uh, we'll see what happens. Try to get some ballyhoo and uh, do some fishing. But we have really good bottom here. I'll throw a picture up on the screen. But there's... It's not showing right now. But there's bait. There's been bait. And... Um, Lots of markings, so it's looked promising this spot. So we'll see. My dad's set up here. He's just got a, I don't know, this is a, there we go. My dad's got a four ounce sinker on here. It's held in between two beads. We've got this rig already pre made like this. It's got about a three foot little monofilm leader here, and he's putting a squid strip on it. I'm going to drop down to the bottom while we're anchored here, waiting for the ballyhoo to come. And then on my setup, I have, um, we're going to put the weight up there and it goes directly to a, don't know what size leader this is, I think it's like 20 pound. And um, we have about 25 foot leader of monofilament um, leading to a circle hook. And we're going to drop those down while we're waiting, hopefully ballyhoo come and yeah. But drifting is definitely going to be the better option for us today. So we're going to try to do this for a little bit since we are anchored and then uh, see what we get. Okay, another reality of fishing in Florida here. Everyone says use a 25 foot leader or whatever to catch mun snappers. And this is what you end up with. A ginormous knot. Great. This will take a while. All right, while well, I was getting untangled, my dad hooked up here. Still using the squid, but he dropped down a hook size. And it seems like that might work. It is a corgi. We know these because we had them up north too. We got a porgy. Not big enough to keep though. See ya. Wow, well, I'm still untangled. Untangling my pole here. That got hooked up to another fish. If you guys come out here, we did learn if you bring squid and you drop it over these reefs and wrecks, you're most likely to catch these small fish, these porgies, these grunts and stuff like that. It is exciting because at first you never know what you're going to pull up from these. I mean, we caught some crazy looking fish that we still have no idea. And it appears to be a grunt. Grunts. Actually not bad to eat. We've kept a bunch of them, but that one's on the small side, so we're not going to keep him. But yeah, if you guys just want to catch a variety of fish, just random reef fish, you can just drop them 60 feet of water on our reef or wreck and drop down small hook with squid, and you'll catch fish for a while. But we're trying to target some bigger fish and some more valuable fish, better eating fish. So I'm going to keep trying and uh, shorten my leader on my pole. Hopefully that'll help with the um, tangling problem. So, well, the little fish destroyed my butterfly mullet. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna pick up the anchor because I think there's just a lot of little fish over here. We're gonna pick up the anchor and just try drifting this spot instead. Uh, hopefully we have more success. All right, guys. So I have my mullet here, and I just want to show you really quickly how I'm butterflying the mullet. So simply, um, this is only my second time ever doing it. So there might be better ways. But I got my bait knife and I'm just going to start here at the tail and make a little bit of a cut so I get started. But you don't want to cut too far down because you want to basically just fillet this mullet a little bit. And so you want to be cutting right along the backbone. And you're just going to cut it all the way. It's easy. So you got one fillet and this is the backbone right here. Flip them over, do the same thing. Guard the tail. Go right along the backbone. There we go. I was just cutting into the scales before. They have really thin backbones, so this could be a little bit difficult. But I'm guessing it's just going to take a couple times to get used to it. Okay. 
car is pretty good. So now we're left with three parts. Two parts that I skinned off, but the backbone, the backbone, I just kind of twist it in my hands and it just falls right out. Cross out over the side of the boat. And then here's your butterfly mullet. Just like that, got the two skins. It looks pretty good to me. And I'm just going to hook it um, through the bottom of its mouth, um, through its top and uh, with the hook and drop them down. So that's how I made a butterfly mullet. That's my way of doing it. All right, so my dad's having success with the squid and the smaller hook catching these smaller fish. But on my butterfly mullet, it keep getting um, hits and then the fish are just peeling the butterfly off of it. So I'm just left with the mullet head. Um, not sure really what I'm doing wrong. Uh, maybe we're maybe the butterfly mullet is better over wrecks. I'm thinking instead of a wreath. Maybe they just hold different fish over there. Um, not really sure. I might switch it up to squid so I can catch a little um, smaller fish too. And we'll probably head over to a wreck eventually. But it's a little update about what's going on here. Fish on, guys! Got my first fish of the day. I switched to a squid strip. That's why. <laughs> Not putting up too much of a fight, but it's at least it's a fish. <laughs> I got something. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It looks like a snapper of some sort. <laughs> I'm stuck on everything, of course. And now I'm tangling. All right, here we are, guys. It's definitely a snapper of some sort. I don't think we've ever caught this, right? No? You're allowed to speak, by the way. It's okay. You're allowed. I, I don't know what he is. I don't know either. I'll have to look him up. Well, I'm going to look him up. Or we can add that. New species. There you are. There you go. Cool. Dad is on again. Probably not going to stay at the spot for too much longer. We, we're really not getting much besides these little bites. Um, so we're probably going to hit a wreck and try drifting over there. I really want to use the butterfly mullet, but the small fish are just destroying the mullet over here. So Let's see what you got. Da -da -da. Oh no. It's a ras. Whatever it's called. It was my bait. <laughs> Great. It was my bait. They, call, they call them. Um, Sand something, sand tiles instead of golden tiles. Yeah, they call them sand tiles. All right, great fish, <laughs> guys. My dad just got stuck in a rock, and uh, this this massive fish here, hold him up for us here. This massive fish took him into the rock, he couldn't handle it. <laughs> don't know what it is, another new species. I think I don't think we ever caught anything that looks like that, but yeah, we're over here at the wrecks now. Um, we're dropping this flat line with a butterfly malt right here, and we're putting out our chum slick. So hopefully the let me get to clean the lens. Um, so hopefully the chum slick brings something to the flat line, and then I am using this high speed vertical jig and trying to jig something up because why not try something different here? So hopefully we catch something doing this in different spot, different methods of fishing. Fish on, guys! Very unexpected. We're bottom fishing here. We switch wrecks. 170 feet on the butterfly mullet. I'm sitting here and it's like, oh, it feels a little heavier, you know? I was just gonna check my bait and. Just hold on. You got a fish. It's not huge though. But there's some big ways. There's some big ways. Hold on. Now we're finding the fish in the rock seas. <laughs> Woo! A fish that's feeling smaller and smaller as it gets up. 170 feet down is a lot to reel in. I can't imagine if I had something big and I had to reel it all the way up It's a trigger fish? I think. What did we get? That's a trigger fish. I don't think it's a queen trigger fish. It looks a little different. Look at the eyes on that thing. <laughs> no, that's why I'm not grabbing it. I have no idea what it is. But look at the eyes popping out on that thing. That thing is wild. Well, that's strange. <laughs> I 
No, you probably can't keep it. It's probably an aquarium fish here. <laughs> Guys, look at the tail. Let me see. Let's put it in the sun. You can probably see it there. You see that spine? There's a spine facing the opposite way. On his tail. <laughs> you see that? I saw that, yeah. I saw you the see, the, you see yeah. the spine Going on his backwards. tail? Yeah. Going backwards. You guys can see it like that. That'll hurt. Maybe that's for like a predator yep. trying to eat them. That's right. I hope you guys can see that. Right there. That's crazy. That is a wild looking fish right there. Going back down 170 feet. Well, we are back here at the pipeline spot. Um, and we expected uh, to maybe find a little bit of fish over here. We've caught a rainbow runner in the past over here and just by chumming and we thought maybe we came back here as like a last ditch effort because that wreck over there didn't really work out for us none, none of the wrecks actually over there by poker worked out for us today so we decided to come here to try to chum a little bit and see if we can stir up another rainbow runner or something because that was delicious last time but there is absolutely nothing going on over here the machines aren't marking anything there's no bait activity on the surface. There's no fish. There's no nothing. So that looks like it's going to be it. We're probably just going to not even bother dropping a line here because there just shows to be no activity. So, um, yeah, probably going to head in soon. And, yeah, I'll see you guys when we start heading in. We are heading in now. We, uh, we just, the last clip you saw of me catching the Blue Runner, that was just a few minutes ago. No, it's not a blue fish. No? No. Alright, here's the fish. Looked it up and I believe it's a blue runner. Um, at the pipeline. It was a little frustrating, I'm not going to lie to you. Because uh, we were sitting there, had a chum bag going, and we're tossing out chunks of our, um, our, our dead mullet, along with I uh, tried butterfly mullet and everything. It's just frustrating when you have these boats pull up on you and they got all the correct live bait. One came up and just threw up kites immediately and one guy right next to us hooked into a sailfish. And you know, it's just a little frustrating when we come out here all day. Don't have the right bait and stuff. I wasn't successful with getting the right bait. And you know, the people right next to us catching fish that we, we've been trying to catch fish all day. And you know, and someone catches a sailfish right next to you, it hurts a little bit. Um, so definitely it was a little frustrating today, but we're still putting our time in here, still trying to learn. So if you guys made this far in the video, um, again, thank you. And uh, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe down below. Go check out a bunch of my other videos. They're not all like this. Um, usually I'm a lot more positive and you know, we actually do catch fish. So make sure you go check out my channel and check out my other fishing videos. Um, but yeah, this one, I just really wanted to show you guys the reality of fishing down here. I just decided, I came out today and said, no matter what's happening, I'm making a video. I want to show people what it's actually like for a beginner like me and some of you guys I'm sure too to come out here and try fishing when you don't have million dollar boats with unlimited budget budget for baits and everything like that and the best of the best equipment this is the reality of it you know you come out here sometimes we caught a sailfish like a month ago about you know sometimes you have good days sometimes you have a day like today where we struggle to catch any fish but it's fishing so I'll stop rambling now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Until my next video, remember to keep living salty.